We're going to be creating an action listener for a button using Eclipse and the Window Builder environment. To do that, we already have uh, created a basic structure here set up. We have a string panel.java, and in our string panel right here, if we look at the design tab using our Window Builder editor, it parses the information, and we have a button right here. It says click here, and it has absolutely nothing attached to it. If I could look over in the code back on the source, there would be nothing there. But to create the action listener, we have a built-in method to go ahead and set that up. So what I do is I go ahead and double click on the actual button in the design window. It should automatically take us into the source tab with a new action listener. And as you can see right here, it puts the code automatically inside the constructor. And although that code does work and would create it, that is a very poor structural place for it when designing code. As we've already set up a setup panel method and a setup layout method, I'm going to add a new method called setup listeners. In setup listeners, I'm going to take that chunk right here out of the constructor, paste that, and so again, keeping all of my lovely stuff together, so all of my news are set up right there, and I have my add action listener right here, and I control shift F to keep my formatting nice and pretty. An action listener is something that listens for an action. It is what watches for it to occur, and so it adds the action listener to the button. Which button? The test button and it creates a brand new one, and it's required to have this action performed method. Here inside the action performed method is what happens when I click the button. We're gonna add some action listeners for our code again, and just to redo this all, make sure it all works nice and pretty, we're gonna go ahead and restart from the beginning. As you can see, here in my code, I no longer have my listeners. There's nothing in there, I just have my setup layout method, and all that does is put the constraints on where things are gonna be. Go ahead and minimize that. We have our setup panel method, and again, our setup panel method we're using to keep our code nice and clean. It's where all the information is set, the basic stuff for the layout, putting the panel together, adding anything we need to do, and putting it in. Clean this up one more step by adding up this dot in front of that so it's all saved nice and pretty. Minimizing that as well. And we have those methods called after declaring our new objects in the constructor. Again, a reminder, if we do not have the objects declared as new objects if they're not initialized to having a value. If they are null, when we add them in, they will not show up inside our app and obviously then cause problems. So we want to make sure we um, have that new section all declared inside our constructor at the beginning. We then have our methods that we'll uh, use to set up. So we have a setup panel method, a setup layout method, and our setup listeners. We can do this automatically using the design tab. And over here we have the click here button. It's the test button as we can see over here. And by double clicking on it in the design window, it will bring us immediately into the code for it. And as you can see, it dumps it automatically into the constructor. But because we want to keep our code looking nice and pretty, we'll take that right out. And so we'll take that those two lines of code starting at test button.add and going into the semicolon, cutting it out of there, and adding it to our setup listeners method. Again, as we had earlier, that method is called as part of the constructor. So it's right there, it happens automatically when we're building it and it's taken care of. And I'll do control shift F to format the code, making it look a little bit nicer. And what happens is in the at setup listeners, we have our test button dot add action listener. So the add action listener method automatically adds an action listener for that specific button. And this is what's called an anonymous inner class. By using anonymous inner classes, we can have it so it's just quickly and immediately available for us right there inside the code. And as part of that, we do the new action listener, and which is creating the new one right there. And it, because it's an action listener, it requires us to have this method action performed. And right now, action performed has nothing in it. So if I run this application, it will do absolutely nothing. We'll test it out. I click on the click here button, and nothing occurs. That's great. We'll close that. So what we want to do instead is we want to make sure that when we click on the action performed, that something will happen. And so I have already declared right here. I have a button called change panel color. We'll go ahead and click on that, take a look at it. It declares a couple random numbers in random red, random blue, random green, and assigns them a random value, casting it as an int, taking 255 times math.random, and storing that as an int inside those various values, and then calling the set background, passing a new color, passing it random red, green, and blue. This will randomly create a background color for our application inside our action performed, we'll call that method and a semicolon. So when I click on the button, it will automatically call the change panel color every single time. We'll go ahead and we'll play the app, click here. And as you can see, we are randomly changing the color of our app 
every time I click on the button. The other button, up here in the corner, still has no action attached to it. As you can see, we have in the code, there is no add action listener in our setup listeners method, nor do I have anything set up here on my other button, which we can tell because it says new button right here, matching when it says new button right there. We're going to go ahead and do this by hand rather than using the design window just so we can get some more practice doing this. We're inside our setup listeners method. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of space after the action listener for our test button. And so we'll start off with other button dot add action listener. And we are adding a new, it's an action listener. and we want to go ahead and press our matching squiggles. As you note right here, we have the parens that's um, closed right there, but it's missing something. It's that semicolon saying it's at the end. And inside here, it's still saying it's wrong, highlighted red, because as you see if we move our mouse over, it is missing a method that is required for this, and that is the action perform method. We can click on it to add that unimplemented, or we'll just type it ourselves. And it's a public, it's a void method called action performed and action event is the parameter that it's type of parameter it has passed and it's called e right there and we'll call it click just because we can it's only seen inside this individual method call so we're okay and we're going to try with this one move buttons another method i've created and so when i click on my other button it's going to call the move buttons method go over here to the move buttons and as we can see in here, it takes int x position, int y position. And based on the get width and the get height of the actual application, it then assigns that into the x position variable or y position variable, and then sets the value of that for our test button and our other button. So it's going to randomly move our buttons all over the screen. This is going to be fantastic. We'll hit the magic power of save and play. Randomly clicking the button still does that. Wonderful and great. Let's try clicking on new button. Ah, new button moves us around. Oh my gosh, look right there. And our click button here, our other button still does the color changing. New button moves it randomly. These buttons both work no matter where they're at. And we are good to go. We now have an app that randomly moves buttons. If I click on new button and click here, changes our color. Going to review all the code that we have for this. We have our GUI runner.java. This is what's setting this um, up in the first place. Of course, we have our package, public class GUI runner. No comments on this one for this time. And has a string frame as a current frame is a new string frame, calling current frame.start, which then leads us to our string frame.java. Over here in string frame, imports a menu bar. I didn't use anything with that yet. And current menu bar is a new string panel, set up the frame, set up frame calls that, sets a new menu bar, and where it goes right there. Set this doc set content pane, passing at the current panel. And then we have the set resize set visible, which sets the visibility and all of that for right there. We have no items inside a menu bar, so it is blank and we don't see it. Going to a back to our string panel, our string panel, we have all of our imports that go along with the statement. Minimize that down. We have our declaration section where we list all the variables we need access to throughout the entire class. Our constructor, we have the initialization of those same class variables. And then, so we can have the design window be very effective as well as have our code called immediately upon the creation of our panel that extends jpanel, we have our setup panel, setup layout, and setup listeners methods. In our setup listeners methods, we have a listener for both buttons. In our move buttons method that goes along with that, we've got that taken care of. Our change panel color changes the color of the panels. And we have our setup panel method, which sets our background color to by default, then adds the layout as the current layout, adds the buttons and items to our layout manager so we can deal with them, put them around as necessary. And then our setup layout method, which we're not really using right now, starts us off with those original locations as the default location.